One of the hottest price points during the pandemic boom was $600,000. We wanted to get into some homes to show you what this price gets you after the crash. As a bonus, there was a $1.7 million house that was literally on the same street, catty corner from one house that was listed at six hundred dollars that we looked at. I think it gives you a really good perspective of what's happening in these midtown neighborhoods. It also happened to be a parade home, so we got you some eye candy as well. So the best thing about this house is its location. Um, it's an older home built in the 60s. It's a typical split foyer plan, uh, which means when you walk into the house, you have to choose to go either up the stairs to the main living area or down the stairs to the basement. It's not a super popular floor plan, but it does give you more square footage for the money. But it's got the layout of a 1960s home. And you know, if that's nostalgic to you, that can be a good thing. Um, it's kind of, you know, it can be a drawback for some people because it doesn't have that openness. Like if you look at the kitchen, you can see like the kitchen's like an enclosed room. So you can't have like guests in the family room and then, you know, kind of have the kitchen open where you can hang out together. So upstairs, you've got three bedrooms, a master bedroom, and then two other bath bedrooms that share a bathroom. Um, and then a, you know, here's the kitchen. Um, it's been, kind of remodeled, but really the best thing about this property is its location, and that's probably why it's priced the way it is. So it's sitting right here in what um, is kind of part of Midtown. It's really like Northeast Raleigh. It's getting ready to blow up. So right now it's in kind of an urban feeling area. It's right behind um, Duke Regional Hospital, but most of the things that are walkable are like business to business companies, hospitals, medical offices, cleaning services, storage companies, you know, these kinds of things, not like boutiques or coffee shops or restaurants or things like that. There's a couple of restaurants, but not, not a ton. But it is about five minutes from um, Costco, from Trader Joe's, from a whole bunch of shopping over there, which isn't that far. It's only about a mile, but you do have to go under the, the 440 overpass. And so it's not like a fun mile. <laughs> it's not on a nice greenway or something like you might see in other parts of town. Um, and then it's about two miles from North Hills Shopping Center. So you can drive, like if you're gonna be in the car, you can be 10 minutes to everything downtown has to offer, all the museums, all the cool shops and restaurants and you know events and concerts and all that kind of stuff is super close. Um, and then five minutes to North Hills and everything that North Hills has, has to offer. But here's the really cool thing and here's why I think this property is priced the way it is. There are two major Midtown developments Raleigh Ironworks is about two miles away, so it's still, it's about a six minute drive. But Midtown Exchange is only about a mile and it's an easy walk. I mean, it's super close to here and it's gonna be an incredible development. So the thing about this area, is it's urban and yet a lot of the development around here has not been like designed for people to kind of live and walk and so when these houses were built out here i mean this was the suburbs of raleigh and the point was you lived out here and you drove somewhere to work there wasn't any attempt to make any kind of like live work play community out of these suburbs it's just where your house was and you drove everywhere and you still have to drive everywhere but because it's so close to downtown raleigh this area has really not come into its own yet there hasn't been a lot of this kind of lifestyle development that you see in these areas that are the most popular that you know lots of little boutiques and lots of little cool restaurants and coffee shops and hangout spaces and you know little parks that you can kind of go with park benches and just hang out with your friends and do yoga on the lawn all that stuff is coming very soon. So I do think it'll be a really great location at some point, not too far in the future, another year or two years, this place is gonna be incredible. It's zoned to really good schools. And um, so, so I do think this is a diamond in the rough kind of property. Um, you know, so in this area, you're going to get a much newer house. You're going to get a, a much bigger house. This house is almost 3,000 square feet, built in 2019. 
and it's in a planned community with these beautiful greenways throughout it. A house like this is, you know, almost new construction, um, and it's in this relatively new neighborhood in New Hill. You know, just, just typically what you would see in a relatively new construction home in the Triangle area. Clean, new, pretty, just move right in. This area still feels a little bit rural. You're out in the country. There's not sidewalks. It's, you know, country roads that you're driving through to get here. Um, the closest grocery store is, you know, probably close to 10 minutes, but there's not a ton of stuff right here. So if you want to go shopping, restaurants, that sort of thing, you're going to have to drive into Apex, which is, you know, 10, 12 minutes. Where's the closest grocery store? Because this is a little bit rural feeling still. About eight minutes, 10 minutes, Publix on Old Kelly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know yeah. which one you're talking about. It's not. I mean, it is kind of a drive, but not terrible. Not terrible. Okay. Yeah, we've heard that they're going to put in like a Trader Joe's soon. And that would be kind of a game changer. They are? Yeah. I'm not yeah, sure where that's, that's... for a stop sign right by the post office. But the neighbors are that so would nice. Be I feel like when yeah. you move into a brand new development all at the same time, everyone's just friendly yeah. versus moving into like an older neighborhood that's already established. Um, so it's a really good community. They do things for... Halloween for the kids over on the bridge and we just had like a concert I think last week where we had food trucks and just everyone's just that's awesome excited. who arranges that stuff like the HOA there's or? a social committee um, you're 20 minutes from Pittsburgh you're 15 minutes from the new Triangle Innovation Park um, which is going to have an impact on this area with housing prices and that sort of thing and, and a lot of the development that'll that'll end up happening in this area that's still kind of country just because of that um, innovation park that's going to be coming. That's where VinFast is going to be um, with their, their North America headquarters. That's where um, Wolf Speed is going to be. Um, between those two companies, you're looking at almost 10,000 employees um, right there, 15 minutes from here. Um, and this is kind of my speed. I love this kind of like country, um, slightly rural, slow, small towny sort of feeling thing. I guess it's not really small towny, it's, it's rural. There's no like town here. You can feel that this was somebody's home. There haven't been a ton of updates. I bet someone's grandma lived here for a really long time and loved living here. It's got these huge, beautiful windows with beautiful view. I mean, the view out the front of the neighborhood is just lovely. Um, it's just a standard mid-century type of home, very simple, you know, just a living family combo with a small kitchen and three bedrooms. The location on this, just like the other one, what you're paying for here is the location, but even more than the last one. The whole area has this different feel. It's got these beautifully placed trees everywhere. You know, big, old, mature trees. It's just a developed, well-lived in, well-loved community, and it has a very community feel. On school days, you can see all the families walking their kids along the sidewalk to the school, um, and, and it is a community. You know, you've got multiple schools. You've got a middle school and a high school. I mean, a middle school and an elementary school right here. Um, you've got three churches. It's a very like little pocket community that's that's just lovely. I, this is probably one of my favorite areas in Raleigh. It's also incredibly close to everything. It's 10 minutes from Crabtree Valley Mall, probably only five minutes from Crabtree Valley Mall, actually. You're 10 minutes from downtown Raleigh, and you're five minutes from the Museum of Art, and a million miles of Greenway right out your door. And there's a lot of um, artwork along all of the Greenway trails because it's part of the art park. Um, and it's just an amazing area that's really, really well situated for just about everything. a parade home from the upcoming parade of homes that's going to be happening over the next three weekends. 
um, but this is Exeter Builders, and I, I don't know if y'all remember, but I did a video with, um, you know, highlighting a bunch of their homes. They're, a, they're an incredible uh, Raleigh area builder. They do a lot of stuff here inside the Beltline and also up in North Raleigh, and kind of those areas where there's some no nice big lots up there. Um, so anyway, it's right across the street from the house we were just looking at, that's 600,000, and so I thought we'd come over here. It's obviously a lot higher than that price point, but, um, beautiful home and a good kind of example of what types of things are going to be coming into this neighborhood as some of these smaller 1500 1600 square feet house homes are um, torn down and replaced by larger homes like this so it's, it's a really good kind of idea of what's going in around you and why the prices are what they are i wonder what lot value is on a house like that we'll ask him because that house is 600,000, and i know in this area the lots tend to be even higher than that at times so um, we'll ask the builder if he can give us an idea of like what that lot might be um, valued at with that house sitting on it. A year ago, we paid 450 for this lot. Okay. Um, so you can see the prices of these have gone up significantly. The ones on this side of the street are 600,000 now, pretty consistently. Okay. But the uh, ones that side of the street, backing up to Whole Foods, I wouldn't think about buying it buying as a teardown. It just gotcha. doesn't work for what I think customers who are gonna buy a nearly a $2 million home would expect. Yes, thank you. Uh, the bedroom, I think was our best feature. Uh, cute porch, hidden uh, pantry. Um, those are kind of some of the uh, things down here I think would be, you know, interesting. So what does this all mean for this price point after the crash? These homes that we looked at were all in really good Wake County locations, and the last home was listed almost at lot value. If you go to Clayton or Garner, you get more house for your 600,000 like these houses. In the last month, only 12 houses sold in this price point, and the median days on market for those homes was 12 days. 30% of those homes sold under list price, 17% sold above list, and the remaining 53% sold at list price. One year ago, during the same time period, 12 homes sold in this price point, just like this year. The median days on market was only three days instead of 12. The big difference is that a year ago, 67% of houses sold over list price, 17% sold under, and 17% sold at list, which means that the average list price for the homes last year that sold for 600,000 was 575,000, and then they were bid up to 600. The bidding wars have slowed significantly, but not stopped, and inventory remains tight. But given that one of the homes we looked at has already dropped their price 24,000, it appears that there's room for negotiation and you do now actually have time to shop. You don't have to make split second decisions about which home to offer on and that to my mind is a really good thing. If you like this video, you might like this one where I visited $500,000 homes.